Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I heard one of the testifiers describe the, the impact of um, disability as significant and unanticipated, which is interesting um, because the program was, was originally developed to anticipate that there was going to be some degree of need um, for folks in this profession to receive disability benefits. And if you look historically at the numbers, the claims, the individual claims are relatively flat and then start to ramp up pretty rapidly at a particular point around about 2019, 2020. Um, in 2013, there were 278 claims. And in 2022, there were 779. That's almost triple. So what's going on there? Why, why is that happening? I'd, I'd be interested in um, your thoughts, Representative Her, on why the necessity for this bill has presented itself. Representative Her. Madam Chair, Representative Hudson, thank you for the question. So my numbers are a little bit different than yours, but you are correct that the trend has been going up and it's gone exponentially. From our numbers in 2019, it was 118 applications and by 2022, there was 257. Um, what I, we've done through this process is that I, I try to never assume somebody's motives and why people are taking um, uh, you know, duty disability. Um, what I can say is that law enforcement has gotten a lot harder. Um, there has been a lot uh, more demand on our officers and so, and our firefighters, and we're asking them to do more, especially you know, with us um, wanting them to, um, to provide different services that they might have in the past or to adjust the, how they do their work. And so there's just a lot of greater demands on them. And so, yes, the, so there are more people who are experiencing mental health uh, conditions on the job, and we want to make sure that those individuals get the support that they need and the treatment that they need so they can go back to the job. But we also you know, have heard anecdotally that um, there are people who understand how the system works and they're able to um, to navigate the system for um, potentially a personal um, gains. And that is why we have what we did put in place is that we don't want to hurt officers and law enforcement who legitimately need this help to get them what they need up front and then to give them their benefits. And that's why we, we did put in the annual review. But we, uh, uh, but we also wanted to ensure that if there should be situations where there are those uh, individuals, few bad actors that might be a part of this, whether it is on the employer's part or the employee part that uh, you know we had the mechanisms in place and so there are a confluence of reasons as to why we are seeing that increase and I, I like I said I don't want to assume motives I think it'd be really good for members who might have a question to talk directly with MPPOA or our sheriffs or our chiefs or, or you know uh, so and they could give you a, a better indication I don't want to speak for all of them yeah and I'll just add and this is maybe shouldn't add say something you don't know the answer to. <laughs> um, but I thought the legislature had changed the presumption um, a couple years ago to um, sort of take away the burden of pr proving mm -hmm. um, some of these claims. I'm seeing a lot of head nods too, which could also account for the increase, I suppose. Um, Representative Hudson. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Representative Her. Um, so bad actors who had, can navigate the system in order to affect it for personal gain. That's, it, to the extent that that's true, I have to imagine it's always been true. Um, unless the suggestion's being made that the change in recent years to the, to the standard has enabled a bunch of new bad actors, which is an interesting suggestion. Um, but I, I appreciate you acknowledging the fact that it has become more difficult for our peace officers and our first responders in recent years. Um, the context has changed, and I think we'd be remiss if we went through this hearing and did not acknowledge part of that context, which has been the widespread demonization of this profession in the political discourse, calling them racists, calling them white supremacists, persecuting them, a state representative from this chamber, former, stood outside one of their homes as part of a group of protesters and threatened to burn his city down. All right, Representative. I'm sure that I'm sure that has nothing to do. I'm sure that has nothing to do with the fact that we now have to hear a bill. Representative Hudson, we're getting off the focus. We're not. Bill here. The focus of this bill is addressing a crisis that has been created 
Representative Hudson, you're very close to being called out of order, please. That would be terrible. What a price to pay for standing up for these people, being called out of order. That would be horrific. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. I'll, just, Rep I'll, just, I'll just bring it in for a landing here. I'm glad we're doing something about the problem. Maybe we should put some thought into the cause. Thank you.